Hi everyone, Winslow here. I'd like to thank you again for joining me at ARC. Today, what we are going to be working on is getting started with the basics of breeding for carnivores that we're going to be able to take with us into the Manticore fight. I have a couple of carnos here that I've tamed up, and let's just go ahead and take a look at them. I managed to get five pretty decent level carnos out in the wild that we're going to be using for our breeding test today. We can use our spyglass to look at our base stats. You've got your stats, which are the raw number, which is the number on the left, and then the actual stat number, which is the smaller number on the right, with the dash zero being the number of points you've put into it as you've leveled. So what we're doing with this Carno here is she is going to be our prime breeding female until we get a better female most notably because of her damage output and her hit points. And I'm pretty certain that one of the males here has higher hit point stat than she has. So what our goal is to mix the stats together or merge them so we can get a good breeding male and breeding female with identical stats that are above 30. Looking here at the other Carnos that we have, this 217 has a higher health stat than the breeding female. So we're going to go ahead and use him. And I'm going to pull the other three Carnos out of the breeding pool because we don't really want them to be involved. They don't need to be involved. I'm going to go ahead and get some saddles made up for the Carnos so I can move them out of the way and park them where I need them. This is a blueprint for a saddle that I made with the upgrade station. And I do have a prior video on that, that you can check out. And when I get enough saddles here, I'll get everyone into position and then we'll go ahead and start on breeding. And with everyone lined up here, we'll just do once over again on our stats to make sure we've got what we want. And we've got what we want. Absolutely, between these two. Okay. So then the rest of these guys, we're gonna go park away. And they're still gonna be very useful. They're not trash. They're not gonna be thrown away or anything. I'll still use them for hunting packs and harvesting and just guard dogs for the base is good for if raptors wander in. There's nothing wrong with having extra dinos around. But we don't want them to be involved in the breeding, so I don't want them to accidentally be on breeding and get our prime female pregnant with an egg and on a cooldown for breeding cooldown while we're trying to showcase some of this because it's not an egg we would want to hatch anyway and with final examination here on our breeding pair I'm going to go into the radial menu under behavior and enable mating on both the male and the female you're going to see a little heart icon appear which is a signifier that they are currently doing it and if you get close you'll be able to see the percentage of their mating now with egg layers, they will immediately pop out an egg that you can pick up after they're done breeding. With mammals and other animals that have live birth, you then have a gestation period. And they're roughly the same between gestation and egg. The problem is, is with egg, you can store them for later use. With gestation, you cannot. And if you cryopod something that's pregnant, it loses the baby, but keeps the cooldown. They're almost ready. Generally what I do once the egg pops out is I disable mating on one or both of the breeding pair so that that way they are not accidentally breeding and I, when I'm not around.
almost done. And there we go. Okay, so the fertilized eggs, you see they have the glowing, glowing aura around. That signifies them as fertilized. What we're going to do, and the nice thing about having egg birth, is you can pick it up and you can take it where you want to hatch it. I generally like to use air conditioners for hatching because they do help with temperature regulation. And we're just going to go ahead and set this guy down and it will be incubated in the next 20 minutes. I am still going to babysit it because if you walk away and go out of render distance, the game recognizes it as being out of temperature range. And that will cause it to start to spoil. There's a, an egg health bar at the bottom of the egg pop-up and you want that to not hit zero percent because if it does the egg cracks and dies so i'm gonna just sit here babysitting this egg and i'll be right back now here you can see i had to add another air con because i had heat wave come in and the egg was too hot and so it was starting to break and damage the egg and the stats listed here are good I want to keep them. We're going to keep this little male. He's going to replace our current breeding male. So we're going to give him some food, walk him around. I'll bring him outside, let him grow up, and then we'll go ahead and replace the current breeding male with this guy and see if we can't go ahead and get another generation of good carnum. So he's big enough and old enough now to move outside. I did put him in the barn for his youth. And he's not ready for breeding yet. He's still only an adolescent, but we're going to take him out, get him ready. And one thing you don't have to worry about in ARC is inbreeding. There is a lineage and a matrilineal and patrilineal line, but there's not really any mechanic or negative for inbreeding. So it is perfectly okay for this Carno to breed with his mother. It's not weird in Ark. Don't think about it too much. I'm going to go ahead and imprint. I always imprint my dinos if I'm able to. You don't need to imprint your breeding stock because they're not really supposed to be going out and about and getting into danger. And printing does not affect the breeding whatsoever. Now that he's all grown up, we're going to go and get him fit with his saddle and get him started on breeding. It can take several attempts to get a good breeding pair. We're going to go ahead and hope for the best. And all you could really do is just breed and collect eggs, hatch, and check the stats. And I want to emphasize again, the biggest part about breeding is the time sink. To get to this point, it's been about six hours because this little boy was not the first one that I hatched. He was just the first one that I wanted to keep. And that is what you're going to be faced with a lot of when you're breeding is a lot of dinos and a lot of babies born that don't fit with your breeding program. So let's take this egg and we're going to hatch it and see what we get. And hatch and let's go ahead and check on your stats real quick. Let's see how we did. Now, unfortunately, this little guy is also not going to make the cut because he did not obtain the required stats or have better stats than the current male or female. So we're going to go ahead and just put them in a cryopod for now and I'm not going to tell you what happens to them later because that's private. Just kidding. What I actually do is since this is PVE, you can't unclaim and kill the babies. You can't really do anything to them. So I take them away from the base 
and I release and unclaim them. I always do one little last check to make sure I'm not accidentally unclaiming the baby that I would want to keep. And then I politely and quietly forget about them and think that they've lived a long, happy life out in the wild. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up part one of the Carno breeding project. I think that we had a really good baseline here. We got a good female and a good male to start out breeding. Not quite perfect yet, not quite a matched pair, but we'll get there next time. As always, I would like to thank you for joining. I do greatly appreciate your support. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for something that I can do better, please do not hesitate to reach out to me to any of the social media links that are provided on my channel. I will do my best to respond, and I really think that I've been getting some pretty great suggestions so far. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.